everyone, welcome to Myra TV, the web show. It is such an honor and a pleasure to welcome you to the second episode of what's of many episodes to come of this TV show that I've put together to feature inspiring journeys. And I couldn't think of a more inspiring journey to be a successful entrepreneur than the beautiful Paula Lacovara joining us from Buenos Aires, Argentina today. Hello, Paula. Hola. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> Paula Lacovara is a very successful entrepreneur, but most importantly, she has a heart of gold and a story that is sure to inspire us all. And so thank you so much for tuning in today. By the end of our time together, we will have touched many lives and we will have inspired entrepreneurs and non-entrepreneurs to follow their instincts, to connect the dots that are in front of them, and to stop fearing the future because the future is too far away. Is that right, Paula? Yes, absolutely. Let's be here. <laughs> yes, yes. So let me just tell you a little bit um, about why Paula is joining us today and why I was inspired to interview her. Paula changed my life last year, y'all. I was a hardworking entrepreneur doing everything I could for my business and I've, I kept hitting walls until I decided to invest in myself as well. It wasn't, I stopped putting all the money into my business and I invested in myself. And she was the the, the feminine beauty, the life coach that I needed at the time to help me reconnect all the pieces, to help me really put together, uh, like bridge the gaps where I was just focusing on the business and the external um, world and I needed to bring a lot of Maru in and work on my own rough edges so that I could support and grow a more successful business. That is exactly what Paula Lacabara does. She is a beautiful Argentinian woman who is dedicated to helping women all over the world own their beauty unapologetically, integrate the feminine and the masculine into a beautiful combination so that they can soar and own their talents or gifts and share them with the world. So welcome to my TV show, my web show, Paula. <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy to be here and so honored, Maru. I mean, you've done, you are an immense, beautiful woman filled with power and and gorgeous beauty and you you know your gifts are felt i know from everywhere uh you know there's so much that you do to the world and i'm not surprised that you're doing this so generous soul so i'm so happy to be here yes so paula went from being a hippie in cordova right in argentina 12 years ago uh, really wondering, not knowing what she was going to do with her life, but knowing that there was something else to life and what she was doing, to following her instincts, literally answering the call from a sister that lived in New York saying, just come on over, I need you here. And she went knowing that you were not going to come back. Since then, she's had instincts, right, Paula, to, yeah. that have led you to the next chapter have led you to the next chapter. This woman knows that it's not a straight line to success. <laughs> it's absolutely not a straight line, but she's going to take us through a little bit of her journey of what happened for you to go from hippie 12 years ago, not speaking the language, closed on your back and a bag, to now being a multiple six-figure entrepreneur, coaching and hosting uh, retreats and help uh, for women all over the world. So tell us in a nutshell a little bit of what that transformation was like. <laughs> well, you know, in my early 20s, and I did not tell that so to give you the credit, but in my early 20s, I did an exchange student program in, in the States for a year. So I learned English and then I, I came back to Argentina. I found this really successful work job and I was making a lot of money and then I meet this guy and it was the love of my life at that moment I thought and you know we got together and we bought the house and we bought the car and I thought that my life was looking exactly as I thought it should look like and then one day all of a sudden this guy wakes up and says you know what I don't think I love you anymore but but before even that happened I actually had I was fired from this really good job for laughing this was corporate I was too happy and I, at that moment, I said, I'm done. So I started my first entrepreneurial project. And at that moment, then my husband at the time couldn't take it. He says, well, you've gone nuts. What are you doing? You're getting out of the system. This is not working for me. Boom. Marriage is done. The universe started to show me the signs. You know, when you were saying, yeah, I, I, I started to listening to the signs. And I was like, why is this happening to me? I thought I was doing everything I, I had to do, right? Like, really, I was living a life that wasn't really mine. I was living a life that I was told I should live, right. right? 
Then I went in, you know, I went to India for a month. I came back. I had a huge transformation. I went to the middle of nowhere <laughs> in, in the middle of Cordoba and I was dressing with tie dye dresses. I was really doing my soul searching and really doing the, the inner beauty piece for myself. My sister called me. I went to Miami. You know, it definitely, and that's in that moment, you know, I was so connected with myself that I knew, I knew I had, I was never coming back. I knew I was meant to do something bigger. I did not know what that looked like, but I felt it. I felt it and I answered. I said yes to that. Absolutely. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. So Paula, um, tell me a little bit about how, so you were doing skincare, you moved to the U.S. and you started doing skincare, but what, what were the shifts? What, what happened for you to go from helping women with their skin how did you start that and how did you jump from that to, to breaking like your six figures? Right. So I was in Miami, right, when I landed with my suitcase and no money. I started working as a waitress, you know, like doing that kind of job. I wasn't sure what I wanted. And then, you know, I, I, then I had the opportunity to move to New York and I knew, you know, I knew I needed to do something else because I didn't want to be a waitress in New York. And so I start. so this is what, you know, one of the things that you and I talked a lot about is to, you know, when you're really listening to the signs, I love this book from Paolo Coelho, uh, The Alchemist, you know, when he talks about how the signs and when you're so connected, you know, it's not linear, right? Like, like you're listening and then it, it's taking you to different paths. And so I remember this guy, he's, he's this friend of mine told me, you know, you're so good with aesthetics. Why don't you study something like that? And I said, yeah, that might be true. I went to New York. I found this school. I fell in love with it. And I started where I, you know, right after I graduated, I found this job right away. And then I started helping women and I, I started seeing, and I wasn't doing just a facial. We were like, blah, 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 like talking all the time during the facial. And I was giving them life tips. And also I was doing my own growth and I was sharing what I was doing with them. And it, so it, was, it wasn't only their skin that was transforming. It was their lives. You know, they found better jobs. They found that relationship that they always wanted. They like even guys, I met guys you know, that were coming to get facial, they were experiencing a huge, immense transformation, like the increase, you know? And so right, at, so I knew that there was something more and then they were asking me about food. So I went into nutrition school and I found what coaching was. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm already doing this. So that I started to really connect with that whatever I was doing and even at a deeper level, now I was paying way more attention and, and we, you know, especially women, we're really experiencing deeper results. And I'm like, oh my God, like my calling, I knew like from my heart, I knew that that's what I was meant to do. I started to even saying yes to many, uh, many coaches and like learning, like soaking in all the information. You know, sometimes, you know how you go so like, you really like, you can't wait for it to, to be even better, to have even more information. And so I started, um, you know, hiring coaches and getting really educated and and that's how you know eventually i turned it into a business like i opened my own practice in the city and i turned it into coaching and skin at that moment until i realized that there was something deeper for me to go and and it was really like i knew that i was working on the feminine power and so i really wanted to touch on that and the response was immense which was last year so that's when i hit you know 300 Three hundred thousand dollars. That's amazing, and you're on track to do a lot more this year, right? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm. I'm already like I was just sharing with you, right? Like I, we, I just finished a beautiful retreat in Buenos Aires, which was my first time doing it here. I did, uh, you know, I work with clients all over the world. I did some private intensives in Paris and different parts of the, you know, New York. Uh, Miami and all that but you know really definitely it's unlimited right like you really open yourself and life takes you now I'm opening my Spanish website and it's going to be grand we're gonna have friends it's gonna be a mega event here in Buenos Aires more than I thought it was you know I imagine and that's how it usually happens when you're open to receive it life wow, that's, really one, of your, that's mm -hmm. one of your key messages right like we have to open ourselves to receive yes um, so I'm going to touch on that, but first let me ask you, what did it really take? What did it really take for you to achieve the levels of success that you have achieved up until now? 
You know, one of the main things that I think in, I mean, every, every successful person would tell you differently or not. For me, it was resilient. If it's something that I've always been is resilient, like knowing, like really, you know, sometimes you trust your, I mean, trusting yourself is huge. And sometimes you have fear or not, that shouldn't shake your trusting in yourself and trusting why you're doing what you're doing. I knew that what I was meant to do was beyond me. It wasn't something that I was choosing from my head. It was a calling. It was something that I was meant to do. And I kept following that. And that is what kept me in that path of resilience. So no matter what, I, I kept going and I kept moving and I kept saying yes. It's so important for us women to keep saying yes to ourselves, especially, I mean, for everyone. I'm not discounting men. I'm just sharing because I'm a woman and because I mostly work with women that yes, you know, saying yes, there's such an immense power, even if we don't like it, even if it doesn't look pretty, even if, we, if it's not exactly how we planned it, but really surrendering to life, which requires the trust and what re, which requires that resilience. Right. And it's saying yes to what? Is it to our own calling? To, to ourselves. Own? Saying yes to you. Saying yes to opportunities too. Like everything, like the, the things that were coming in my way, I kept saying yes, and it, you know, which is what I share is be, being open to receive it. Of course, with you know, you don't say yes to everything. You don't have to. It's not about saying yes to everything, but really being so in tune with yourself that you know, you know what to say yes to because you're so tuned in with who you are. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about hard work, like the work that it's taken, <laughs> the focus well, and concentration. Right. So yeah, definitely it, it required, right? When you're resilient, like sometimes it's like, it's not that I didn't sleep, but I remember sometimes waking up at three in the morning, like inspire and like, I have to have something to ride on. You know, we've all been there, right? Like right. you're so filled with so much. And also sometimes, you know, for me, as if, as if more in the feminine, you know, building the business structure was more like, really like, Ugh. like it really, I have to, I had to push. Some of the, those pieces were the masculine pieces that I really needed to hone and learned and, and it wasn't fun and it wasn't pretty, but I had to do it. And so, of course, in anything that you do and at this level, you require to do what's, what you require to do and it, you don't have to do it all. Certainly, I don't. My husband now, it's in my business, you know, he's joining us in the business and he plays a crucial role, you know, and of course, you know, I was also able to hit that mark because he was, he was helping me and because I could count on him and, and, but that's also a, another thing too, because we had to also agree on many things. Anyway, like what I mean to say here is that you don't do it all. You don't have to do it all to have it all. Oh, I love that. You don't have to do it all to have it all. Uh yeah. So how do you maintain your openness to receiving as an entrepreneur? Sure. And this is the key, the, the connection with the feminine, the connection with yourself. I mean, I say the feminine because, you know, it's really an integrated piece, right, right of who you are. But most women, right, we're operating from, we're learned that to be successful, we need to just operate like men from the masculine. And we burn out. We like your body can only take so much pressure. We're not built to handle certain amount of stress. Your body is not built for that. So I always, as I, as you already know, you know, I teach women to connect with their feminine, like first thing in the morning, you know, do the rituals that I taught you that I always teach that I do to really start your day with your feminine and then close the day with your feminine. So you you have that harmony, that tango between the feminine and masculine energy. So your life doesn't become straight line and so hard, but has also the curves, you know, has also mm -hmm. those pieces where, um, where you can actually really um, have those, uh, you stop, you pause. And when you pause, you know, most people are afraid of the pause, thinking that it's unproductive. Now, when you pause, that is your state of receiving. In that pause, you allow things to come your way. Like, 
many times, you know, the more I push, it's like the more I, the, I'm running towards something that it's never happening. And I found, and I know now to be true, but in the beginning, it, of course it was scary. Oh, if I stop, nothing's going to get done. <laughs> right? Like, how do I do this? Now I realized the more I started doing it and, and, that things will come and like boom a discovery session was on my mailbox or a client who called me because like do you see that's the pause that's the beauty of the pause not only i gain strength back not only i get nourished and replenished but also i allow things to come into my life wow wow did you always believe in yourself no no that was the biggest path that I had, the biggest work that I had to do. It was with myself, and this is why today I, I teach what I teach. That was my biggest thing. This whole piece about believing in myself, this whole piece about receiving. I mean, you're talking to a woman who suffered from bulimia, body image disorders, who wouldn't go out and, and stay home eating all day because she didn't feel worth it. Uh, you know, suffering in relationships, being the victim, you know, crying until four in the morning nonstop because I mean, almost every day because I was miserable and I didn't know how to get out of there, you right. know? So yeah, absolutely. You know, this is a woman who had to do a lot of transformation and, you know, ask for many teachers to help me in many books and many things to really claim myself unapologetically which is what i teach today and really seeing who i am i was just on the on a on a phone you know on a session with a client and we were like okay really how hard it is for us women you know i, I now that i i have it so in me i forget but i was looking at her and I like how hard it is for you to even say like you're like make a list of the things that you bring to the table right in a relationship or even yourself like praising ourselves we're not taught to do that it's all for the outside and it's all waiting for the outside to give you that feedback that you're okay to give you that feedback that you look good to give you that feedback that you're worthy mm. and it has to start from ourselves from within because no the the reflect the outside reflection would always be a reflection of what you're thinking inside Absolutely. wow that was a big, powerful message right there, Paula. Thank you so much for sharing from the heart. And yeah. to start closing down the interview, I'm, I'm just so thankful you shared that because I think we can all relate to not feeling good enough or like we're going to make it because the journey that we're on is it's like a spirit journey. Like I say, it's to face your demons, to face your fears, your doubts, your insecurities. And you've done it so beautifully. And you've, you're really being a, a role model for all of us that are coming before you. So just, just um, one of the last questions I have is, do you have any advice for those that are afraid to dream big for not, you know, afraid of dreaming big because they may not get there? Well, you can't think how you're going to get there. You first have to dream. You know, the dream, the desire energy is the one that brings everything towards your way and your path for that, for that to become a reality. Like I share, you know, very quickly, I am launching my Spanish website here in Argentina. And I, in the beginning, I was going to do something really intimate. And then, some, and then I said, well, maybe someone can do an article. I... I never, I knew that I wanted to do something grand, but I was, I was a little bit like, oh, maybe, maybe that can happen. And once, you know, I just kept focusing on, I know this is going to benefit so many women. Anyway, long story short, now I'm getting press. It's going to be a mega event. So you don't have to worry about the how. And I know everyone tells you that. And it's so annoying because you're like, what do you mean? I don't have to worry about the how. Yeah. You don't have to worry about the how. You are required to dream big and to connect with your desires. When you connect with your desires, these it, it, there's like an energy that moves things into the I don't know how to say it, like a spiral energy, if you will. You know, sort of like a hurricane, but in a positive way, like attracts and brings it to you. So our job as women is to trust our feminine, to trust ourselves in our femininity, and really claim that because when we are connect with our beauty we become the magnet for things to come our way so that's our job and I know your your other 
thoughts are going to be like, ah, oh, how are you going to do it? Trust me, you require to connect with yourself to your desires. When you do that, you things and, and pause from time to time, pause to see, to reassess, to watch what's coming your way. Because if we're like a ball going, we're not going to see what's outside what's coming in right from the outside i can't wait to share this interview with the world gosh you're so powerful and beautiful and you're so wise honestly paula is one of the most masterful coaches i've ever met and uh and i just want to thank you for your time for taking a pause out of your busy days in south america conquering the world and helping so many women from down there paula is there if there's anything else you'd like to add uh, advice for us newer entrepreneurs that are you know that desire to to have income levels of success and most importantly impact if there's anything else you'd like to share well what I do like to share is what you shared already you know I remember when I interview you too you know you share this piece of like you know like yeah sometimes we worry so much on the structural pieces how am I gonna write that email how am I gonna send this uh, you know how many clients do I want but we forget about ourselves and we are in this kind of businesses. We are our business and we are required to take care of ourselves, to make ourselves be beautiful, like really connecting with all of who we are, which is the feminine. And so, you know, you require, it's a requirement, it's not even a need, it's a requirement that you take time for you as a woman because you're gonna burn out and nothing is gonna work if mama is not happy no one's happy in the house this is the same concept you're required to be happy you're required to and you deserve it because think about it when you're happy and you're lifted you're energized things will you become more of a magnet for things to come your way right and now if you're all grumpy and crap like that's not gonna work so think about really if you trust me if you for, uh, focus on that piece of being really good and feeling awesome and beautiful about yourself so many things are going to come easily much more easily into your life and business and on that note um thank you again paula that was so beautiful and i'd like to thank all of you that are tuning in and, and watching the show i hope you got a lot out of it as i have thank you for the refreshers you're wonderful and how, um, I will make sure to put your um, social media information so people can also learn more about your work and your unapologetic receiving and uh, how to own your feminine beauty unapologetically. Mwah. Besos, querida. And thank you all so much. Thank you, everyone.